Ibrahim Traore just shut down Dubai exploitation of Africa. Dubai's exploitation of Africa's gold reserves unveils a complex web of international greed and exploitation, with multiple actors involved in this orchestrated heist. Contrary to common belief, this illicit operation isn't the sole work of a single nation but rather a collaborative effort among various countries. Recent revelations have shed light on the staggering scale of this plunder. In 2022 alone, a jaw-dropping 435 tons of gold were smuggled out of Africa, equating to over a ton of gold extracted each day. The harsh reality is that a coalition of nations has joined forces to siphon off Africa's gold, reaping immense wealth while leaving the continent mired in economic instability. These nations have built their empires on African gold, profiting immensely while offering little in return. The question that lingers is, who is truly pulling the strings behind this grand scheme? Africa, endowed with abundant natural resources, has long been a prime target for foreign exploitation, from the dark days of colonization to the present era of globalization. The United Arab Emirates UAE, with its opulent skyscrapers and lavish lifestyle, emerges as a pivotal player in this modern saga of exploitation. Shockingly, in 2022, a staggering 93% of illicit gold flowing into the UAE originated from Africa, totaling a mind-boggling 435 tons valued at $35 billion. This sum represents a substantial portion of Africa's total gold production, 40%, and a notable fraction of the global total, 12%. However, attributing this crisis solely to the UAE would be short-sighted. The West, with a historical track record of exploiting African resources, quietly collaborates in this grand heist, reaping benefits from the looted gold that funnels through Dubai. This exploitation of Africa's resources perpetuates a cycle of poverty and inequality on the continent, a continuation of the colonial legacy that has plagued Africa for centuries. The illicit gold trade is a glaring example of this ongoing exploitation, with nearly half of Africa's gold unlawfully exiting the continent through Dubai in 2022. While Dubai has established itself as a prominent gold trading hub, attracting global traders and investors, beneath the facade of prosperity lies a murky underbelly teeming with corruption, smuggling, and exploitation. Gold extracted under hazardous and unethical conditions in Africa evades regulations and taxes that could benefit the continent. This isn't merely a legal issue, it's a profound moral dilemma highlighting the enduring disparities between Africa and the rest of the world. The UAE may serve as a central node in this illicit trade network, but the West plays a pivotal albeit quieter role, profiting from the gold that transits through Dubai to Western markets. Envisioned in a chain of exploitation, Africa's gold is mined under often unsafe conditions, smuggled out to Dubai to evade legal frameworks, and ultimately finds its way to Western markets where it fuels economies and enriches multinational corporations. These corporations, many headquartered in Europe and North America, are the ultimate beneficiaries of this stolen wealth, turning a blind eye to the origins of the gold they purchase and profit from. In this convoluted process, Africa is left grappling with environmental degradation, social disintegration, and economic impoverishment while others reap the illicit gains. The UAE's centrality in the gold trade, coupled with Western complicity, underscores a global system that exploits Africa's resources and people while perpetuating a cycle of inequality and injustice. Ultimately, if Africa isn't reaping the benefits of its own gold reserves, then who truly is? The answer to this multifaceted question lies at the intersection of the UAE's pivotal role as a global gold trading hub and the complicit involvement of Western nations and corporations that profit from this exploitative system without regard for the consequences borne by Africa and its people. The irony surrounding countries that profess to champion human rights and transparency while being complicit in a system that exploits Africa's resources and people is stark and disheartening. At the heart of this exploitation lies Dubai playing a crucial role as a middleman by providing a marketplace where illegal gold can be sold, thereby facilitating the transfer of wealth from Africa to the West. The city's opulent skyscrapers and luxurious lifestyles are, in part, funded by the misery and exploitation of African miners. However, this exploitation isn't merely about wealth, it's about power. 
By controlling the flow of gold, the West and its allies maintain a stranglehold on global markets, keeping Africa in a position of dependency where its resources are undervalued and its wealth siphoned off. The Western financial system is deeply intertwined with this exploitation, with banks and financial institutions primarily based in Europe and North America providing the infrastructure for trading gold on global markets, benefiting from the profits while turning a blind eye to the human cost. Multinational corporations, operating in industries ranging from electronics to jewelry, utilize the gold that reaches Western markets without questioning its origins, thus perpetuating a supply chain tainted by corruption and exploitation under the guise of legitimacy. Western governments, often proponents of democracy and human rights, contribute to this exploitation through trade agreements, foreign aid, and diplomatic relations that create conditions conducive to this illegal trade. The profits from Africa's gold trade, while staggering, are concentrated in the hands of a privileged few rather than benefiting the continent's population at large. Funds that could uplift millions out of poverty, build essential infrastructure like schools and hospitals, and invest in Africa's future are instead funneled to foreign banks and corporations, exacerbating environmental degradation, social unrest, and economic inequality. The perpetuation of this exploitation can be attributed to a complex interplay of political, economic, and legal structures designed to protect the interests of the powerful. The West, historically entrenched in colonialism and economic dominance, has crafted legal frameworks and trade agreements that benefit multinational corporations at the expense of African nations, making it challenging for African countries to control and profit from their resources. Moreover, the influence of multinational corporations, backed by significant resources and global reach, shapes economic policies in their favor, often at the expense of environmental regulations, taxes, and labor rights. Political interference by Western nations in African politics further exacerbates this exploitation, maintaining African governments' dependency on foreign aid and investment, hindering their ability to resist the exploitation of their resources. Institutions like the International Monetary Fund IMF, and the World Bank wield economic influence over African countries, prioritizing foreign investors' interests over local populations' needs. This intricate web of exploitation, sustained by political, economic, and legal mechanisms, perpetuates the flow of Africa's resources out of the continent, while the costs and consequences are borne by the local communities who are left marginalized and impoverished. The policies that are often disguised as economic reforms in Africa serve as tools of economic control, strategically crafted to ensure that the continent's wealth continues to flow to the West. This manipulation of economic policies is a deliberate effort to maintain the status quo where Africa remains a source of cheap resources for the world, while the powerful benefit at the expense of the weak. One significant issue that contributes to this exploitation is the control of information, Western media frequently portrays Africa as a continent plagued by corruption and conflict, attributing these issues solely to internal failings while disregarding the role that foreign powers play in perpetuating these very problems. By painting Africa as a region incapable of self-governance, this narrative justifies the ongoing exploitation of its resources, framing it as a necessary evil. However, the reality is starkly different. Africa's challenges are often a consequence of external interference rather than inherent flaws within the continent. The media's portrayal of Africa as a place of disorder and chaos conveniently diverts attention from the deeper truths about the exploitation, masking the complicity of Western powers in perpetuating this exploitation. Narrative control by Western media helps to sustain the existing power structures, ensuring that the global audience remains unaware of the true extent of Africa's exploitation. By focusing on surface-level issues like poverty, corruption, and conflict, Western narratives sidestep the underlying causes deeply rooted in the structures of power established and maintained by the West. The system that facilitates the exploitation of Africa's gold is not a happenstance of history but a meticulously constructed framework that favors the powerful while exploiting the weak. This system thrives on legal manipulation, economic dominance, political interference, and media control, all working in tandem to perpetuate the flow of Africa's resources out of the continent, leaving it to grapple with the aftermath. The consequences of this systematic draining of wealth from Africa are profound and multifaceted, impacting every facet of life on the continent. 
The illegal gold trade not only depletes Africa of its resources but also intensifies poverty, fuels conflicts, and devastates the environment. The insatiable demand for gold in the West exacts a heavy toll on African communities, with the environmental repercussions being the most immediate and visible. Artisanal mining, often the source of illegal gold, wreaks havoc on the environment through the use of toxic chemicals like mercury and cyanide, polluting rivers, soil, and entire ecosystems. This environmental degradation extends beyond local issues, contributing to broader challenges such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and desertification that affect the entire continent. Moreover, the human cost of the illegal gold trade extends far beyond environmental destruction. Operating in regions with weak governance, the trade frequently falls under the control of armed groups, including terrorist organizations and criminal syndicates. These groups exploit the profits from gold mining to fund their activities, perpetuating conflicts and instability. The economic impact of this exploitation is equally severe, with the loss of billions in tax revenue depriving African governments of essential funds to invest in crucial services like education, healthcare, and infrastructure. This perpetuates a cycle of poverty and underdevelopment, reinforcing Africa's dependence on foreign aid and investment, further entrenching its vulnerability to exploitation. In essence, the exploitation of Africa's resources, particularly its gold, is not merely an economic or environmental issue but a complex web of power dynamics, legal frameworks, and media narratives that sustain a system where Africa's wealth is siphoned off while its people bear the brunt of the consequences. Breaking free from this cycle of exploitation requires a comprehensive re-evaluation of international policies, economic structures, and media representations to empower Africa to control and benefit from its resources sustainably. African nations struggle to develop their economies, relying on foreign aid and investment. The illegal gold trade further fractures communities, widening wealth gaps and fostering social unrest. Armed groups and violence erode trust, hindering communal progress. This illicit trade not only harms the environment and economy but also undermines African societal foundations. The West's complicity in this exploitation is not just a moral failing but a crime against humanity, with profits leaving the continent while costs burden its people. To break this cycle, African nations must reclaim control over their resources. By refining gold locally, they can retain more value, create jobs, and bolster economies. Renegotiating trade agreements, promoting transparency, and holding governments and corporations accountable are vital steps. Collaboration within Africa and a global shift in attitudes towards the continent are imperative. Reforming the global financial system and advocating for justice for Africa are essential for a fairer distribution of resources. Seeing Africa as a partner, not a resource bank, is crucial. Africa must assert its sovereignty, demand fair treatment, and build a movement for global equity. Isolation from exploitative nations could be a strategic choice. Empowering Africa is key to shaping a narrative of empowerment, prosperity, and justice. It's time for Africa to lead its narrative and forge a future where its wealth benefits its people. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.